Hi, I'm Erica Ramirez, founder of Gilly and host of What About Your Friends, a podcast dedicated to the many lives of friendship and how it's portrayed in pop culture. Every Wednesday on the Ringer Dish feed, I talk to my best friend, Stephen Othello, and your favorites from within the Ringer and beyond about friendships on TV, in movies, pop culture, and our real lives. So join me every Wednesday on the Ringer Dish feed, where we try to answer the question TLC asked back in the day, what about your friends? This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two-year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. Today, I'm here with my colleague, Nora Princiati. Nora, welcome back to Bachelor Party. It's been a minute. Thank you so much, Juliette. It has. I'm so excited to do this. I'm excited to talk about The Bachelorette and hear your thoughts. I also asked you if you were going to be watching the television program Quarterback on Netflix, which I'm like weirdly obsessed with. Not, again, just need to stress, not because I think it's good, but there's just something, <laughs> there's just something there that has captivated me. And who better to discuss it with than you, an NFL reporter who also loves pop culture and covers pop culture on every single album, currently deep in the throes of the Taylor Swift summer. P.S. How are you feeling about Taylor Swift summer, just in general? Pretty good. Pretty good. It is at times exhausting. <laughs> the Maddie Healy era was was stressful. I'm glad to see that that's over. Are we sure it's over? I do think it's it's pretty over. I'm not sure it ever really started. Because of the heart or because of PR? Because of both. Because, <laughs> because they are just not people who are... They are people who are meant to have a weird crush from 2016 on each other, and they are not really meant to be more than that. I don't know a lot about Maddie Healy, even though I am a big fan of the 1975 I certainly wish I knew less than I do now. I'm about to say, keep it that way. Yeah. And I think Taylor might feel similarly. I'm not letting her off the hook. She's been a fan for a long time. She definitely knows him. But as Amanda and I said on Jam Session, he's like a capital B bad person. Like, I don't need to even need to get in the other things, but clearly just like a, a piece of work. So stay away, everybody. Yeah. I started this podcast with a PS. I was like, PS, what do you think about Taylor Swift? But now... That, and so now we're deep a, in the throes. This is the first time anything has begun with a PS, maybe except for like a, a conceptual novel. Let's <laughs> talk about charity. Have you skipped any seasons of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette? Like, what's your watching been like the last couple of seasons? Because I don't think we've really chatted about this in quite some time. Yeah. So I, I have skipped seasons. I tend to, so when I watch and when I don't watch tends to have a pretty strict correlation with, are they airing in competition with football games mm. or not? <laughs> Just because when that's happening and when it's like, when they're doing two episodes a week and there's games, I just, it's too much for me to keep up with. I watched most of last season and then just fell off. But I'm going to watch all of this season. I'm liking it so far. Great. So I, like, I, I tend to be 50-50, but I'm, I'm in it. I just found out that, um, I found out, I mean, I was reading Reddit this morning, and I found out that this season is only nine episodes. Like, it's Men Tell All plus eight charities. Shocking. 
Yeah, it is shocking. I like it. I think, I don't think we need like the extra men or whatever, but so we're through four episodes. She's already down to six guys. Next week, they're going to New Orleans. And then the following week, episode six is hometowns. And then they go to Fiji. So a couple of things about that. First of all, do you like this more truncated season? Fewer guys, fewer episodes. Like, how's it landing for you so far? Yeah, I I think largely I feel oversaturated by Bachelor content. I Like, I truly, even when the seasons are not that great, I enjoy the ritual of watching it, of keeping up with it, of having friends over and watching it. But usually there's just too much to do that. So lessening that a little bit, I think is a good idea. I just was really, it took me a minute to collect myself when whoever it was, somebody said, I think at the beginning of the last episode, we're down to nine guys. And I just I went, know. what? I know. How? <laughs> We just got here. I know. I like, I just, it's a great point. I feel like I just arrived at like really feeling comfortable with this season. Like I was excited, but I don't know. We've basically just been in Braden land for three and a half weeks. And now we're down to six guys. It's kind of nuts. Like so many of them barely spoke. Double denim Ken, AKA Sean. He had, a, <laughs> he, he got to be in episodes three and four, but he was like not in one and two. Well, and also he had that one incredibly weird scene where he walked into the house and was just like a level 12 asshole. And was like, oh, hey guys, like been hanging out with Charity. Everybody gets super mad at him. And then like, we have absolutely no, he seems pretty annoying other than that, but like nothing else has risen to that level whatsoever. So when she chose him at the end, I, first of all, initially thought that she said, John, not Sean who she'd been like making out with for half an hour. So I don't understand why she didn't keep him. And then thought like, we don't know anything about Sean. We know that he had this one incredibly annoying moment. We know that he's like a little bit full of himself, but it just seems like there's, my question is, is has this gone quite so rapidly for her? Are there things that we're not seeing? Like, do we just not, are we the only people who don't totally know these guys or does she really not know these guys? Well, I think it's both, but I think it's kind of probably for the bachelorette, like that they don't like the women and whoever the lead is, they probably don't get to know a certain number, but like, I can't imagine you don't write off at least like seven guys on night one where you're just like, you guys are out. Like it's just it's have to. not, it's not happening. Yeah, of course. But so when you have 30 guys, it still leaves you 23, but the difference between 23 and 18, and I'm just kind of using seven as a random number is pretty significant to this show. So having only 25 actually makes a big difference when we're used to them having like such a bloated number of, of contestants now. So it's, it's kind of weird, but the John versus Sean thing, John B, it was a tearful goodbye. People were upset. Like, I think I forget who it was. Oh, I think it maybe was Xavier, but I think he was like, yeah. sob- he was like sobbing yes. at the final toast before when they were leaving. And I was like, dude, what's going on? That and seems I w- like an L. Like he seems like one who would have been worth keeping. I, something happened there. That's the one who got away. Sorry, Charity. For some reason with Xavier, I feel like he should be on Stranger Things. Like he reminds me of like, like it's just like a, like a nerdy cool guy. Like I mean that as a compliment, but I just feel like he is not meant to be on a dating show. He's like meant to be among friends and like showing off his personality and like not what he's like on a date. Cause I was like, tell me why he's crying. Show me why he's crying. Who is he so upset about? (laughs) I wish I had gotten to know more. Well, and that's my only thing about it. It going so fast is just, it does feel like, and there are always every season, there are things that happen where we're going, sorry, what? Like there has to be more there. Cause I don't understand that. But there, there have been a few and there were a few in this last episode where I just went, did we miss something? Like, I don't understand how we got from A to B here. And I wonder if some of that is on the cutting room floor because it is progressing so rapidly. Largely, though, I'm in favor of it. Yeah. The other thing that's been pointed out is there's fewer group dates. Like, there has been many more one-on-ones as it's gone along. And I do think these changes are partially because Mike Fleiss has gone. So, like, they're just sort of doing things a little bit differently and maybe making some different decisions without straying too far. But... It it is weird. Like, who do you feel like you know of the whole cast, other than Brayden? He's and I'm like, do we even know Brayden? I, side note, his ex girlfriend posted a TikTok like yesterday or something. Ooh, where like she had like brought him home like right like the holidays. Like he had like a serious girlfriend right beforehand. 
The most shocking thing is that he has a serious girlfriend. Like, who wants to date that yeah, guy? Yeah, ever. <laughs> ever one time. Did he wear earrings then? Like, yeah, I think he did. On her TikTok, I believe he was wearing earrings. Callie makes fun of me because I'm very dialed in on the earrings. But, like, they're so distracting. They are so distracting, and they're just bad earrings. And they look uncomfortable. Like, I have I lived my entire life basically only able to wear, like, small, small earrings. Same. Yeah, like, Because they otherwise. hurt my earlobes. Yeah. And, I, I mean, I guess he's a big guy, and maybe that translates, but I just, I, I cannot Strong not earlobes. stare at them when they're there. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, <laughs> Brayden. He's just a real, he's really tough. But anyway, who do you feel like you know? Doughton, end of list. <laughs> Like Joey is very nice and normal Mm -hmm. and I think we'll probably go incredibly far and we will be in some tearful scene with him, positive, negative, you know, congratulations, (laughs) goodbye, whatever it is being like, this is a, this is an attractive man who seems to have not caused problems. He was very thoughtful in talking about his family and his father. And that seems like a (laughs) remarkable story. And I'm really, really, really happy for them. I know nothing else about this man. I do not have a sense of like what he would be like to hang out with. I don't get his personality. Seems like a good guy. That's it. <laughs> so like he's the next closest. But it, to me, it is it is Dotton and, and that's it. I think we have the most facts about Dotton and Joey, but I feel like I actually know Aaron B in a, well, in a way pretty well because he like has interjected. I feel like I know his, his, his character, though I don't have like his bio data, but... I don't know. I agree. I, feel like- I left him out because I don't like him. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> He's just it's like, too much. Since he played the keyboard, it was just like, no, dude, let's let's move on from that. He, but I, I do feel like I knew he wasn't going to go far. Or I knew he wasn't going to win. It seems like he does go far because we're here. But the turtlenecks are just an absolute red flag. They look really bad, and he wears a lot of them. Braden was rightfully accused of doing too much, and definitely holds the crown for person who's doing the most so far, but he's second. Just, I agree with that. He needs to take it down a notch. And Xavier agrees too. It's just, he's just like, why are you doing this, dude? Yeah. Talking to you has made me realize not a lot of football influence in this season. Usually we have got like a lot of football players and I've gotten none. I mean, they had like the dodgeball date, but we have very few people who are highlighted for being a former college athlete or like making it to a practice squad. Like very few. And that's become a staple the last few years. Yeah, that might even be a first. I know. White Caleb played baseball. <laughs> yes, he did. I think. Yes, and he did. And then we have the tennis with Joey. That's kind of, That seems like it's kind of it. Not a particularly athletic bunch. No, at least at least not that we're aware of. I When Dotton was like, you know, they just assume you're a basketball player because you're tall. I was wondering if he does play sports. Like he doesn't, he doesn't overly like communicate that with like his body language or anything, but also... Maybe he does. I, I just thought that was kind of interesting. And I actually have heard from, from other guys who, who are really tall, people in general, but particularly men, like I do feel like that's just an assumption if you're like over 6'6". Six, six, people are like, oh, you oh, must be basketball. basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Which, is that insulting? Is that like an insulting thing to say? I understand how I he was like, so. being put in a box is is not great. Yeah, but, but men, like men who are tall are obsessed with being tall. I love any excuse. <laughs> I'm to obsessed with men who tall. are tall as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, so like our, our, so our society writ large. So- yeah. I feel like they're not upset by it. That's it's like, like, it's the it's the equivalent of like, oh, hey, can you get this off this tall shelf for me? Yeah. Also, there's a lot of studies about how for men, income is correlated to height. Like our society yeah. is really uh, obsessed with tall men, me, me included. I have to, have to out myself. The person who we know the least and therefore I kind of like is Tanner because I'm just like, he seems interesting, but I think it's solely a function of knowing nothing about him and him also being like handsome. This is like, so maybe this is crossing over pods. The cool men conversation Mm. from Jam Session has really affected me. And I've been spending (laughs) a lot of time thinking about it. (laughs) Let me just give a little, a little context. And Callie and I touched on this as well, but on Jam Session on Ringer Dish, Amanda and I have been trying to come up with men who are cool, like no strings attached, no asterisk. Like this is a cool guy. And at first, when the idea came up, we could name no one. Then we came back with a short list, and we've added a few since. But it's genuinely hard to come up with many cool men. And not saying that anyone who's not cool is bad. It's just like male coolness is very hard to come by when men start talking. Very, very, very hard. And that's exactly <laughs> the point, is that like the closer to unknowable 
these men can can be, I think the better odds they have of not seeming <laughs> annoying. I definitely think that's true. Because like when Tanner does talk, I'm just like, oh, he seems like, like a uh, geeky guy. Yeah. <laughs> Which that's- I also, there's space for. But do you have any cool men you'd like to add to the list? So I think I, this is one that I've thought a lot about and he doesn't fit the the paradigm. But there's something cool to me about Stanley Tucci. Oh, interesting. I like that. I like that a lot, Nora. Interesting one. He's huh. just he's just doing his thing, you know? Mm. I also I wanted to posit a scars guard. Which one? Just just to th- Alexander? Yeah, I think that's Lucas Madsen. I think he's certainly so. very hot. And very funny. Is he? Yes. Like weird sense of humor. Very well, odd sense Swedish. of humor. Ben and some like, did he do a Lady Gaga music video at some point? I think he Just did. A, a weird did. trajectory there that makes me kind of think he might be cool. Do you think going on The Bachelorette is inherently uncool? Yes. I think so, too. It's a real challenge. But like, doing most things are inherently uncool. I am incredibly annoying. And, like, that's just, that is, the, like, the more known online, on television... <laughs> Just the the correlation to being cool is directly the inverse. Like, I'm sorry. It's, it's just, true. Smaller the, the, smaller the digital are. footprint, smaller the persona, the cooler you are, except for like a few, as we pointed out on Jam Session, a few exceptions. Like, But that definitely contributes to Keanu Reeves, who I've heard a lot of people who are like, Keanu Reeves is really cool. Yeah. That's partially because he's like, again, just doing his thing, just doesn't have a famous girlfriend, just like living life popping up, doing a cameo and always be my maybe, which is like one of my favorite things ever. Like he's just, he's great. But I don't think that it's necessarily bad that these guys are uncool. Cause I don't know that, I don't know, like Char- Charity needs a really cool dude. Dotton is clearly a front runner. Like there's no question. And he seems awesome, but he seems like a little corny. But like, I think I would totally. be corny if I were Dotton too. Like what is like, I don't know. He just seems like he's, he's got a really good sense of perspective. Most of us are corny. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's largely a positive quality. It's just it's just not cool. Cool yeah. is close to to non-achievable, particularly for men. I th- I completely agree, particularly for we men. We all have to give up on being cool. It's just like never going to happen. I think that we've learned a lot about the bachelorettes since they've been in that role, and I'm curious if you think there's been a cool bachelorette. I'm going to take Rachel Lindsay out of this because she is cool, but like Rachel's just a category of her own. Do you think there has ever been a cool bachelorette? No. Rachel is the closest. I, JoJo has cool qualities just because I think she doesn't really care to yeah. the extent that, that that's possible when you are someone who professionally lives in a world of impressions and followers and ratings. And of course you care. But I think she is able to give off a little bit of like, Whatever, I'm just just chilling and hanging out, which is which is cool adjacent at least. I do fundamentally think it is impossible to be a lead on the show and be cool. <laughs> I think JoJo is a hot girl. I think she's like, yeah. When people say yeah. hot girl summer, they're like they want to have a JoJo type summer or yeah. whatever she does over the summer. Yes. So I feel like that's the, what where that's coming that's exactly from. It. I would say the closest we had at the time was Caitlin Bristow when she was the Bachelorette. I feel like she was kind of cool, but she's so goofy. But did we know that when she was the bachelorette? See, I just think we didn't know her that well. And since when she was the bachelorette, she seemed really suave. The guys were really into her. Like Nick and Sean continued to not like each other, I believe. And like, it was just, I I just feel like she had a coolness to her. A not cool man, but a man who is doing an (laughs) exceptional job. Jesse Palmer. Oh my God. I love Jesse. I'm, I'm, I think I'm his number one fan. And like, I've been desperately trying to interview him in person. I've done it over zoom, but I really want to do it in person. I think that like they're afraid of me and they won't let it happen, but I just want to be in his presence. I love him. (laughs) So first of all, apropos of literally nothing, I saw Jesse Palmer at Pizzeria Bianco at the Super Bowl last year. And it was the highlight of my Super Bowl week. I was just so happy for him. He seemed like he was having a great time. He is giving the performance that he is giving this season is the best part of the season. Just the absolute earnestness and never breaking 
Like I would, Jesse Palmer on Saturday Night Live would be a fascinating experiment because he is capable of just, he never breaks. He delivers the most overwrought, overly sincere, (laughs) faux concern lines with the most perfect, just like I buy every little last bit of this and I live for it. I absolutely live for it. Everyone in my life loves Jesse Palmer. I love Jesse Palmer. I think he's the only thing that we as a country can get behind all together. Like he is a uniting force. I think he's doing a marvelous job. The fact that that has gone like him as host has gone so well is shocking to me, but I love it so much. And, and (laughs) for as much as I think this is a good season, I just want to make it clear that I am tuning in every week to watch Jesse (laughs) pretend to take this seriously. (laughs) incredibly well. Did you watch Rachel and Gabby's season? Probably not because it was on against football. So that was like, that was, that was the season where I felt like I was just swimming against the current. I did watch a fair bit of it, gotcha. but there were things that I skipped and it, it was just a lot. I think it was on in the fall, if I recall correctly. It was on in the fall and because there were two of them, there were like more episodes and it was all. It was a mess. You, you didn't miss much, except it was an amazing Jesse performance as well. Jesse's a really, really good host. And I'm gl- again, I'm glad you're here because I credit it to him being a quarterback. I went to him. I went to see, to see um, I like can't talk anymore. I just like fumble over my words a lot. Jade, you can leave that in. I just like can't speak. I just want to acknowledge <laughs> that for the audience. I apologize. I went to see the live taping of night one of the finale, I think, of Rachel and Gabby's season. And in like during the commercials, Jesse would be in his seat or standing, whatever, wherever he had to be next on stage, just staring at the teleprompter running lines. And it was just like watching a quarterback on the sidelines with their Microsoft surface. Like he was just prepping. He was getting to know the next play. He was doing his job. Like he was just so focused on the details. And I really was like, oh, this, this is quarterback behavior. And that's why he's a good host. It also explains to me why a lot of athletes or collegiate athletes like end up being successful in their post-college jobs, because it does take like a level of focus and attention to to detail to be a D1 athlete. And so I just was like seeing it in action. I, I just, I love him. I love that he takes his job seriously and he's funny. Like he's starting to make some jokes. Like, and he was like, this date card's burning a hole in my pocket. Like, like great dad joke from Jesse. I loved it. <laughs> he can, he can do no wrong for me. Like he's, he's phenomenal. I know. And he's also so, so handsome. Lo- love that guy. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your new year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only, promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Can we talk about quarterback now? This reminds, this reminds me. This, so how many episodes Absolutely. did you watch? <laughs> so I was, I was not aware of how long this program is, first of it's, all. Eight hour long episodes. <laughs> I am halfway through. I thought when we talked about this, I thought that there were three episodes. I thought we had one Mahomes episode, one Marcus Mariota episode, one Kirk Cousins episode. And lo and behold, I find out that Peyton Manning has created just like years of content. Yeah. Not sure why, but it's all there. Yeah, it is. It's a lot. So I knew the show was coming. I had no idea what it was and I wasn't really going to watch it. But then I just was like, I need to like, not be mentally challenged in any way. So I'm going to put on quarterback on Netflix. And I just love watching athletes 
do non-athlete stuff, like athlete adjacent stuff. So this is like right in my wheelhouse. But like, Nora, who do you think this show is for? Because it is so unsophisticated about sports and this, the game of football. So I think it is for people who are doing chores. <laughs> so exactly what I just explained. <laughs> yeah. It's pleasant enough to watch. You're, you're absolutely right that if it's, I would even go a step further. Like if you, if you follow the NFL reasonably closely, they're kind of wrong about like, it's not just that they're not very detailed. It's that they completely gloss over the fact that like Marcus Mariota and and Arthur Smith had pretty significant beef in Tennessee. (laughs) And they go through that and go, Oh, well, like they were together with the Titans. So Arthur Smith brought him to Atlanta which is not what happened. So why is Marcus Mariota on this show? Because I find watching him depressing, knowing that he was like, had so much hype and now is a pretty bad NFL quarterback. I mean, I think that's probably like, I go back and forth. I've gone back and forth probably 16 separate times ranking and re-ranking which people I'm the most surprised are involved with this. <laughs> and it just can go so many different ways. I it suppose... has to be Patrick Mahomes is number one. I mean, why? He won the fucking Super Bowl. Like, on the road to the Super Bowl, he was taping this show. He was doing a reality TV show, I assume, to help his wife's image yes. and to make money. Yes. The, the reason Patrick <laughs> Mahomes is involved in this is because <laughs> many people in his life have a very particular relationship with visibility and being part of as much programming as they possibly can be. Again, I haven't finished it. The stuff that I've watched, it never touches on his brother. So like, I think they feel like they can skirt some of the, the controversy, which I guess some of that wouldn't have happened. Can you remind me what his brother did? He was like, I think he was arrested recently, wasn't he? Yeah, so his his brother Jackson, who is big on TikTok and has been accused of sexual battery, he got in an incident with with someone, I think at a restaurant in Aspen, and like there was a host at a restaurant who said that he like forced himself on her, but then also was was just violent and got in a got in a whole thing there. It seems really messy and kind of gross. He has not been, I mean, I know Patrick and Brittany took him to see Taylor Swift when she was in Kansas city. So like he's still in the mix with them. He's had a bunch of it. There's just like always a different thing. Nothing else has risen to that level, but there were issues where he was disrespectful during a memorial service at a different game. Mm, Right. There's I know he's like always in the issues. news. Yeah I, yeah, I don't like pay that close attention. I mean, I I um I also know that Brittany Holmes is like fight has like fought with fans, and that that's like part of the backlash against her. But the lengths that this sh- the show goes to make Patrick Mahomes seem like a really good family man, and I'm not doubting that. By the way, I have no indication he's not a good family man, but it just feels like such a weird narrative when this man just won his second Super Bowl at the age of 27. Like, it's just sort of so beside the point of who Patrick Mahomes is. So it's really bizarre to me. But what do I know? I have to say, if I'm head and shoulders, I got, I'm got i happy right now. I love that he references his head and shoulders uh, sponsorship in reference to not cutting his hair. So, <laughs> but the Mariota stuff I find painful. It's just weird. I'm like, what did he it think he sad. was doing? It is sad. Yeah. I, I I would love to know more about the timeline of when when people agreed, when people were asked. Also, how much they were paid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, did you expect Peyton Manning to come back because he's like in the first scene to like introduce the show? So and that apparently gone. was originally the plan. He was he was gonna narrate the whole series. Oh. And then they decided to not have that be the case. Interesting. Huh. Huh. Okay. I have to say of these three men, Kirk Cousins would fit in really well in The Bachelor and Bachelor Universe. He is super lame. Oh my God. He's okay. a lame man. When this when the series started with Kirk Cousins sharing a Margaret Thatcher quote. <laughs> Do you think he has any sense of like her political profile, like who she is? Not like good Absolutely or bad, but just not. like- anything having to do with her. Like, did he see Iron Lady, perhaps? Probably not. Maybe. 
but probably <laughs> not. I don't think. And Kirk Cousins, I mean, Kirk Cousins has his own politics. Kirk Cousins' relationship with the NFL's COVID policies was its own story a couple of years ago. Like, Kirk Cousins is not afraid to, for as bland as he can be, when Kirk Cousins has an opinion. I don't know why I'm saying Kirk Cousins over and over again. I, I understand why. It's a, it's a, he's a two name kind of guy. He is I kind get of it. a two name. So, some people are like that. When he has something to say, he'll say it. That said, he does not know anything about <laughs> Margaret Thatcher, I, I would venture to say. <laughs> That's the main takeaway for the show from the show for me, actually, is that he's super lame and he would have been a really good bachelor. Like he would have been perfect, honestly. Like, had he not actually made it to the NFL, but he had all the makings of like a football washout until he actually got drafted and then played because Robert Griffin got hurt. Yeah. I think you're right. He is probably a little bit too earnest. Like, I remember I covered him for like a hot, hot second in Washington. And the biggest thing that happened was that he was really adamant that he wanted like a nook, like his own little <laughs> office space with a whiteboard. How Russell is, Wilson of him. Yeah. But at least Russell Wilson is like married to a celebrity. I, Kirk Cousins is just not. This is my takeaway from it, which is which leads into who is this for is football is just not glamorous. <laughs> and most people watch sports documentaries unless you're getting really great access and insight into something that was truly dramatic and controversial and had huge personalities, like something like The Last Dance works because of that, right? But something like the Formula One docs, or like I haven't watched all of the tennis, but like tennis or even golf in some ways, those are kind of glamorous sports. You're in beautiful yeah. places. There are a lot of beautiful things. I mean, there is no, like you're not getting a Spice Girl in the football doc. There's no just like, oh, all of a sudden Jerry Horner is like riding her horse at her estate and wearing incredible clothes. Yeah. Like, that is never going to happen in this sport, which makes it a little bit more interesting of a challenge to translate. To well, eight hours of Netflix content. The other thing that's really hard is that Hard Knocks is a really good show. And so if you want like an un, like a, I wouldn't say unvarnished. If you want an NFL approved, but behind the scenes look at football, like that's a much better way to do it with like much better. Well, and, cause, and like training camp is a good background for that. Yeah, because it's a good training premise. Camp has inherent, it has an inherent timeline. It has inherent conflict. It has inherent competition. It has a lot of people who are striving for something so you can kind of get behind them, but they're also not famous. So it's easier to get them to share their lives and, and share access. This is, this is just not like, and again, I haven't finished it, but it's, it's hard to find something to build to with these guys, especially because every NFL quarterback has been so influenced by Tom Brady right. and the way that Tom Brady has presented himself in public that they present their striving for greatness basically as like, eating healthy and doing exercises, yeah. which is yeah. a really good thing to do if you're an NFL quarterback. It's just like not fun to watch on TV. <laughs> I'm like a huge loser. So I found uh, some of it a little interesting. Like some of the training stuff, like the positions they like put themselves into, like, I, because I don't follow football the way that you do, I don't cover it. Like I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting how like their chiropractors, like do your throwing mo motion to see like, you know, how much deeper you can get or whatever. So yeah. I thought like that stuff was kind of interesting, but the other thing I was like trying to think about, I was like, I, I've, I've heard that Formula One's growth as a result of the Netflix show in the US is really driven by women getting very into it. And I was like, do they make this show for women and like underestimate them and like underestimate their interest in football and like how much they know about it? But it's very hard for me to imagine Peyton Manning being like, I'm going to make a quarterback show for women. So I don't think that's it. <laughs> Counterpoint, if Peyton Manning made a quarterback show for women, this is exactly how it would turn out. It's true. Just like not a clear thesis of what you're trying to accomplish. <laughs> Some interesting stuff. A lot of access. Not a lot of character development. Like this is this is exactly what would happen. So I don't know that that's that's not a bad theory. Because <laughs> I think your point about training camp is a really good one. And I've been thinking a lot about this, like just with dating shows, just to bring it back to The Bachelor. But in general, in what you were saying, made me think about that. So much, so many of the shows that have really caught fire in the last couple of years, like Love Is Blind. For me, I've just gotten really into Love Island, but like I'm behind. But nevertheless, like the more recent dating shows, 
They combine the idea of like looking for your match with also like navigating the other challenges of a relationship. And I feel like that's just kind of like one of the problems with The Bachelor and maybe why eight episodes is actually a better idea is that the sort of like vacuum style show of like taking people out of their natural habitat and like putting them in a really weird experiment. Like now, like in the year 2023 has to include like other interpersonal dynamics and like having it only be about like a competition to kind of like doesn't work. And so it's similar to like this quarterback show where it's like, what's actually would be a lot more interesting would be not hearing Kirk cousins, like talk about his relationship with his receivers, but actually seeing his relationship with his receivers. And like, I don't know. Quarterbacks tend to be hated by their, by their teams. So like, I don't know. Does Justin Jefferson actually like him? Does anyone else call him JJ? I was just sort of like interested in like, what's that relationship actually like? And it's, I feel like we're too smart as like a TV watching public to just like buy into it. And so for like both of these shows, you kind of like need to like suspend everything that you actually know about humans, which I feel like used to be something people did more frequently, but now it's just not where we are with television. Well, with with The Bachelor, I feel like it used to be easier too. And maybe this is part of why the dating show plus separate context that you're going through on, on the show format works is because I just, I, I have come to feel that the central challenge they have is just, it used to be that a critical mass of the contestants were people who felt that you could actually find love on a television program when you're competing with 20 plus other people. And those are interesting people to watch on screen. And those are people who are a lot more interesting than people who think, oh, maybe this will work out, but also I'm going to get X thousand Instagram followers and therefore I'll be able to make a lot of money. Like that, that's a much less interesting person. That's a person that exists in spades and it's hard for them to, to find enough of the former to overshadow the other people who it's not that I begrudge anyone for trying to make a buck on sure. Instagram. Go for it. It's just that they're less, they are more so likely to be calculating what they're doing to fit that end. So they're less interesting. Yeah. You just need, you need to find the people who think that this is actually a reasonable thing to do because those are the people we want to watch. I think I need to do like a personal, I don't, I don't know when I would have the time or or like mental capacity for this, but like, I kind of want to watch from Hannah Brown season forward, like everything that's happened in the last four years, because I feel like that just was such a magical time. Yes. I was in love with Tyler Cameron and I remain so, but (laughs) It also was just a really good season, but I'm like, I wonder if I would even think that now, like, have I, have we become so jaded? Maybe that's like a good thing to do. A Hannah Brown rewatch. I I don't know. Just an idea. I think that's a great idea. Thank you so much, Nora. Thank you for watching quarterback. I was just like, literally, I was every person I had a meeting with this week who was like remotely involved in our football coverage at the ringer. I was like, have you watched quarterback? (laughs) I just am so confused about this show, but also like I plan to watch it when I can't sleep. Like I will be watching the next episode on Sunday at 3 a.m. I promise you. I just moved. And oh. so like there have been a lot of boxes to unpack and things to move oh, around. Oh, perfect for that. To, like it's a good, it's a good time for quarterback. Oh my God. That's hilarious. If you too just need some background noise and you want to get to know three quarterbacks, just put on quarterback. <laughs> For more Nora Princiati, you can catch her on the Ringer NFL show and every single album. Nora, final note for you. Dotton's obviously final three. Who else? Who's your final three for charity? Dotton, Joey, Xavier? I hope so. I think that seems like it too. Who else is even close? I mean, it's crazy. Um, Callie and I will be back on Monday as per usual. And thank you to my producer, Jade Whaley. Talk to you all soon. Have a great weekend.